What's up my comic comrades? Today we continue our coverage of another title under the guiding hands of Tom Taylor, Batman the Detective with issues 3 and 4. The series follows Bruce Wayne after he left Wayne Manor behind for England and began investigating mysterious murders. He ultimately finds out that a terrorist group called Equilibrium is killing everyone and anyone Batman has ever saved over the years. It's a pretty dope concept. We covered the first two issues of this series back in May, so if you haven't read those issues for yourself and you want to catch up, check this video out right here. Otherwise, you're going to be lost today and things will get spoiled for you. We also want to thank Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's episode. Coffee has become such a massive part of our culture and day-to-day -day lives. And for those of us who love a delicious cup of joe in the morning, Trade introduces you to the nation's top roasters and makes it easy to find new coffee roasts to add to your Java roster. Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffee and then ships your selected bag of coffee magic to your front door straight from the roastery at peak freshness. And it all starts with a few simple questions about your personal taste and the type of coffee you you typically like most. This allows Trey to quickly curate the best matches just for you. You then choose which roast you want to try first, choose your delivery frequency, and boom, fresh, glorious coffee appears on your doorstep as often as you want, so you never run out again. And when I say fresh, I mean your coffee is roasted and shipped within 24 hours of ordering. And that's our favorite part about Trade. It allows us to support our favorite local roasters and their small businesses. So we're getting much higher quality and keeping the communities who serve us strong. Not to mention they use compostable packaging to ship all their coffee. So Trade comes with good priorities all over the place. And check this out, Variant Nation. Trade is hooking you up with your first bag of coffee for freezies when you sign up using our link. Just click our link in the description, sign up, take the quiz, and choose your coffee from their personally customized matches. Trade will then personally ship that first bag of goodness for free. And if that wasn't good enough, Trade also guarantees you're gonna love your first coffee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll ship you out a different bag for free as well. This, my friends, is what you call a win-win situation. So click our link in the description and give Trade a try for yourself. Your taste buds, Thank you in advance. With that said, let's see how Batman the Detective continues to play out with issues three and four. Last we left off, Equilibrium's Batwoman of sorts seemingly killed Descard, an old acquaintance of Bruce. With that said, issue three starts off with Batman carrying Descard into a hospital saying, I need help. Four shots, two stopped by the vest in the chest, two shots in the abdomen, one with no exit wound. Batman continues to tell all the doctors his name is Henry Descartes, 59 years old, heavy smoker, blood type O negative. One of the doctors asks, how do you know the patient? At which point the story takes us to the past as we learn how Bruce met Descartes. We see that many years ago when Bruce was 17, he was tracking down Descartes in Paris. The problem is Bruce was made by the man Descartes was following. This man asks Bruce, why are you following me? And Descartes nearby says, he's not. He's following me, and I'm following you. This man pissed off then pulls a gun on Descartes, and Bruce gets up screaming no before he could get a shot off. Having taken this man down, Bruce then grabs cuffs from his early prototype utility belt and restrains the man. Descartes asks Bruce, you always keep handcuffs on your belt, kid? Bruce replies, maybe, it's something I'm working on, which of course we know that something he's working on is his utility belt. Descartes then tells Bruce, well you saved me a bit of trouble here, as we learn the man's name is Didier, and Descartes was hired by three separate agencies who each wanted him locked away for different assassinations. And now Descartes is going to hand them over to Interpol and get paid three times for one murderous bastard. After Descartes hands Didier over, he asks Bruce, who sent you? Bruce tells him, no one sent me. I want you to train me. You're the world's greatest manhunter. Descartes says, that's quite the claim. How do you know? Did I win a trophy or something that I'm not aware of? Bruce says, I know who you are. Descartes tells him, and yet I still don't know your name, kid. Bruce then tells him, that will have to be my secret. A secret I will pay an obscene amount of money to keep. Descartes replies, I like obscene amounts. Okay, maybe we can work something out. But not tonight. Bruce then wakes up Descartes the next morning saying, I'm ready for training. But Descartes clearly isn't a morning person saying, how? What's happening, kid? What time is it? Bruce then tells him, 7 a.m. Descartes then says, ha, first piece of advice. You can't do this and be a morning person. Now go away. I'm not training you before noon and I'm not training you before coffee. At 3 p.m., Descartes finally meets with Bruce saying, manhunting is primarily a nighttime thing. Bruce asks why. Descartes tells him because it's easier to hide when it's dark and there are fewer people awake and in your way. So clearly Descartes ended up being a big reason why Batman mainly works at night. Little stuff like this is really cool to me to get subtle origins or explanations to why characters do certain things. Love it. Anyway, Descartes then asks Bruce, who did you lose? Bruce answers, what are you talking about? Descartes then says, someone died. You couldn't prevent it. I saw your face when Didier pulled that gun. You were scared, but not for yourself. You risked your life for a complete stranger. But you weren't just trying to save me. You were trying to undo the past. Yes, you should be impressed. I'm pretty insightful. You think you can stop every bullet? 
Bruce then answers, I'm working on it. Ducard tells Bruce a gun could be a useful tool kid. Bruce says to him, yes, a lot of cowards seem to believe that. After this, we get several pages of the coming months showing Ducard training Bruce. We see him teach him how to watch, how to follow, how to detect people who are trying not to leave a trace. As Bruce tells us in the comic while narrating, we took people in together and Ducard seemed to have friends everywhere. We see one of the times where they got their man and Bruce asks, do you know everyone? Ducard tells them, you can't do it alone, kid. It's good to have friends who have your back. Bruce then says, I don't have friends. Ducard replies, nonsense, you have me. Then Bruce says, I pay you a lot of money. Then Ducard finally replies, and some of my best friends pay me a lot of money. Makes me like them more. I have to pause again because Ducard is telling Bruce, you can't do it all on your own, kid. It's good to have friends who have your back. Which is definitely a big reason why Bruce ended up with the Bat family and working with other people like the Justice League. Anyway, as Bruce continues to narrate, he says, I wanted to prove I could do it alone. Wanted to prove I didn't need anyone. I chose a man from Ducard's contracts. An accountant from two crime families. He was a ghost, but I studied him. Everything about him, his history, his family, I questioned. I traced, and I got close, I got too close, and I underestimated the target. We then see Descartes' target realizing Bruce was following him and knocked him unconscious, tying him to a chair. This man then holds Bruce at gunpoint saying, who do you work for? I know you're awake, answer me. Are you a contract killer? Do you work for the police? Both? At which point Descartes kicks the door down saying, drop it. The man asks, how did you find me? Descartes tells him, I did it, the kid did. Nice work, kid. Bruce speaks up saying, I wouldn't call this my finest hour. Picard then says, what? You did great. Don't beat yourself up. I've been after this one for months, as he shoots the man in the head, killing him. Bruce then screams, what did you do? Picard answers, it's pretty self-explanatory. What's the problem? He hurt you. Also, I was hired to find and kill him. Bruce then gives him a blank stare and Descartes says, don't look at me like that, kid. You knew who I was. Bruce then punches Descartes in the face as Bruce's narration says, I was angry, but I was young. I was confused and Descartes was a pro, meaning Descartes beat the crap out of young Bruce and then disappeared. Bruce's captions then say, I didn't see Descartes again on that trip. There were other encounters over the years, and then there was London 10 years ago. Bruce, now Batman, tracks Descartes down and stumbles in on him after seemingly killing someone, but Descartes said he didn't do it. The guy committed suicide. This leads to a big fight between the two of them, and they both end up pretty bloody. Descartes then tells Batman, I know a secret hospital we can go to, which is the same hospital we saw Bruce in in the previous issues. After they get stitched up, Bruce cuffs Descartes saying, I'm taking you in. Descartes all like, you can't be serious. Batman replies, I watched you kill a man, referring to the man he killed all those years ago. The one that caused them to go their separate ways. Descartes then says, what are you gonna do? Hand me to the police? The comic then brings us back to the present where we see police knocking on Bruce's hotel room door. And when he opens up, the police point guns at him and Bruce says, I'm sorry. What's the problem, officers? They reply while cuffing him, Bruce Wayne, you're under arrest for the murder of Henry Descart, as they bring him in. And that, my friends, is the end of issue three. But now, let's jump into issue four. Issue four opens up with the cops telling Bruce, we have a number of questions, Mr. Wayne. Bruce thinks to himself, Interpol wouldn't be questioning me about a single death in Paris. They brought me in because of something larger, something that extends beyond France's borders. The detectives then tell Bruce something was found at the scene of Henry Descartes' attempted murder. Bruce then says to himself, attempted murder, that means Descartes is still alive. The detective then asks, do you recognize this? As he shows him a piece of paper that says Batman with a number on it. Bruce, while taking a sip of water, says, oh, I didn't realize this was soda water. I was hoping for something nice from the Champagne region, but instead you brought me sparkling disappointment. The detective then says, this is an interrogation, Mr. Wayne, not a restaurant. There have been several messages found like this next to an increasing number of bodies. Do you know anything about this, Mr. Wayne? Bruce thinks to himself, this is why I let them arrest me. Sometimes the best answers can be found in the right questions, as they put down photos of deaths that have been happening recently. The detectives then say three people murdered in Scotland a day later, two gunshots each. Bruce deduces, chest and head, a fishing professional, and so on and so forth. One of the detectives then points to the photo saying, do you recognize any of these people? And Bruce thinks to himself, I recognize all of them. I remember all of them because they're people that he saved over the years. The detective then repeats again as Bruce is thinking to himself, Mr. Wayne, it's a simple question. Do you recognize any of these people? Bruce answers, no. One of the detectives then says, one more of these murders took place across Europe. You appeared in England just after 146 people died in a plane crash with the same message. Then you took a train to Paris, and several passengers reported you having a heated disagreement with Henry Descartes in the dining car. Bruce answers by saying, I went to the dining car for a snack. The detective then tells him, you don't need to go to the dining car. They serve you in first class. Bruce replies, I don't like people serving me, but the detective tells him, really? 
Didn't you have a live-in butler once? Bruce thinks to himself, don't bite, they know about Alfred. They're just trying to press your buttons. Good tactic, really. So Bruce just answers, he was more than that. They continue to interrogate Bruce, but Bruce is really getting the information he needs out of them. So they eventually get pissed off and handcuff him to the table. At which point Bruce starts sweating profusely saying, it's getting quite warm in here, can I have some more water? The detectives then ask, what can you tell me about Batman, Mr. Wayne? Bruce says, excuse me? One of the detectives then asks, do you have some kind of relationship with the Batman? Bruce replies, as in, are we dating? The detective then tells Bruce, Mr. Wayne, I have no time for jokes and a lot of people are dead. More are going to die. Bruce then tells them, I wouldn't say we have a relationship. We've crossed paths a few times. Can I please have a sip of water? Bruce then thinks to himself, my throat is swelling, respiratory inflammation, difficulty breathing, as he looks at the glass of water. One of the detectives say, you know Batman, he saved you several times, didn't he? What a pity. Then on the next page, we see one of the detectives stab Bruce in the shoulder. The detective, while holding the knife in Bruce's shoulder, says, there are photos of you and Batman together, but there are ways you could have manipulated that. I thought, I genuinely thought you could be him, but you're clearly too old, and Batman wouldn't have drunk that water. He wouldn't have been so trusting. Which, if you didn't catch on already, tells us these people clearly are not detectives, but are in fact members of Equilibrium who are going around killing the people that Batman has saved over the years. The detectives then leave Bruce thinking he has died from the poison they put in his water, but captions tell us that Bruce is actually just slowing down his heartbeat to stop the poison from spreading by lowering his metabolism. He plays unconscious for as long as he can until he's sure they're gone. Once they're gone, he gets up and breaks the cuffs off the table with his raw strength saying, didn't taste that poison didn't smell it. Someone knew what they were doing. Everything is dark at the edges. Bruce then breaks out of the interrogation room and grabs an officer's uniform to make his way out of the building. As he's making his way out of the building, he's greeted by Squire, who was there to bail him out with a lawyer. But he tells her, I need a pharmacy. I need to make an antidote now, which of course he does because Batman. It takes Bruce two days to recover, and when he wakes up, he asks Squire, how many people have died since I've been out? She tells him, over 200. He then tells Squire, we have to move. Squire replies, probably be easier to move if you could stand. You have to rest. Bruce then tells her, I've rested for longer than I have in years. We have to get my suitcases, and then you have to buy fruit. Squire does what he says while saying, that was a very specific and odd fruit order. He says, yes. She asks, was it a code? He replies, yes. He tells her to suit up and eat the fruit while they wait. Sometime later, a huge mobile tank looking thing arrives, pulling up next to them on the street. A woman then walks out of the tank saying, I thought this was another drill. An old English guy insisted I do this every few months, but I haven't heard from him in a long time. Batman then says, he passed away. She replies, I'm sorry. He always sounded so kind. Batman then says, he was as she gives him the key to this huge bat tank looking thing. Batman then picks up his suitcases and Squire follows him inside saying, what is this? He tells her it's a mobile cave, which we see is outfitted with a toy T-Rex and Penny with a note saying some little pieces of home, Alfred. Because as we know, some staples of the bat cave are the gigantic T-Rex and giant Penny. So Alfred left a mini versions and Bruce's mobile cave before he died. It makes for a really sweet and cool moment. After this, Batman then says, Oracle, take us out to the main highway. As we see a gigantic hologram of her pop up, Batman then says, have a seat, Squire, buckle up. Oracle, take us out of here. We're heading to Belgium. He then has Oracle wipe out all the security footage of him from the police station. Batman and Squire then sit down looking for the target while Batman tells Oracle, it's time. Contact them all. Activate the European Alliance of the Bat. And with that, issue four ends. But there you have it, my comic comrades, issues three and four of Batman the Detective. I'm really enjoying this six issue miniseries. I'm very curious to see how it's gonna end. But what I like most about these two issues was like I said earlier, the subtle hints of how Batman picked up some of the traits that have become staples for him over the years. I really enjoy whenever the creative teams flush out the character's backstory and origin like that. With that said, overall, this has been a really solid Batman series. There's only two issues left, so I'm very curious to see how Tom Taylor is gonna wrap this up. And when they do, I'm gonna be right here breaking it down for all of you. But like I always say, that's just my opinion. We wanna know your thoughts down in the comments. First up for the week of the 21st, we have Moon Knight issue one. Putting it simple, this is the start of a brand new Moon Knight series, no doubt because of his upcoming Disney Plus series. So if you've been looking to get into Moon Knight, this brand new number one is your chance. Next, we have Nightwing issue 82. Melinda Zuko's connection to the man who killed Dick Grayson's parents wasn't a surprise to the Bloodhaven hero. But what the former Grayson discovers about Melinda's ties to the flying Graysons leaves the usually upbeat detective speechless. Now we have Star Wars Darth Vader issue 14. All I'm gonna say is that if you love Darth Vader or Star Wars, you need to check out the series written by Greg Pak. 
that fills in the gaps to Vader's story. And finally, we have Flash 772, leaving past mistakes behind and racing into the future while US returns as Central City's Scarlet Speedster. Now reunited with his wife Linda and their two children, the former Kid Flash begins a new chapter in his life. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you like today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. It helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.